Hello YouTube and in this video we're sailing into our home port of Chichester Harbour. Chichester is a large natural harbour to the southwest of the city of Chichester on the south coast of England. Framed by low-lying coastal plains against the backdrop of the South Downs National Park, it's one of the few remaining undeveloped coastal areas in southern England. Its 11 square miles of drying mudflats contains no less than 17 miles of navigable channels and is home to over 9,000 vessels. It boasts 3,200 moorings and 2,000 berths in six marinas and 15 sailing clubs. And it's the place confidence calls her home. When approaching from any direction, all roads lead to West Pole. This significant port hand beacon isn't difficult to spot against a very low-lying shoreline. And it hosts a variety of meteorological recording instruments, and they can be accessed from the Chimet website, ideal if you need a reality check on the wind strength or tidal height. Skippers with local knowledge and shallow keels can shave a cheeky corner off at the top of the tide, but for the rest of us, it's a port hand lateral mark that we should leave to port as we head in from the sea. Before we move on though, it's worth outlining some of the factors for consideration before you make your decision to cross Chichester Bar and enter the harbour. When the tide's coming out of the harbour and the wind's blowing in, things can get decidedly spicy, and the stronger the tidal current and the stronger the wind, the worse it gets. In the middle of a spring tide and with anything over 25 knots coming in from the south, it's downright dangerous. It's worth taking a detailed look at the shallow part of the seabed which is around the bar beacon. Navionics has its sonar chart, which is worth a look, but the Chichester Harbour Conservancy website has a detailed bathymetric survey of the approach channel carried out in 2021. As we get to the shallowest part, I thought it'd be interesting to compare the 2021 survey with the Navionics most up-to-date chart. And as you can see, whilst the colour schemes are very different, the numbers and shapes are pretty much the same which is reassuring. If we take a little look at the 2022 information for Mariner's booklet, it mentions that despite periodic maintenance dredging, after severe gales, depths can change. And it goes on to say that with a falling tide and strong winds from a southerly sector, a dangerous sea may be encountered. My personal experience would expand on that by saying that if you have residual waves from the recent storm still fetching up on the shoal against a decent spring tide, it can remain awfully bouncy between West Pole and East Oak for a good while after the wind has subsided. The bottom line is, crossing the bar at low water, or with a strong following wind and a falling tide, you seriously need to consider standing off and waiting till the conditions improve. Of course, the majority of the time, the entrance is not difficult, and once past the bar beacon, the seabed starts to level out and the depth increases. And with the Witterings beaches to your east and Hailing Island to your west, the entrance opens up as you approach East Stoke Point. Passing East Stoke Boy and the sea conditions will flatten out. And by the time you pass the West Winner and alongside the Hailing Island Lifeboat House, you're inside the harbour proper. Your next step will be determined by your intended destination. Keep to the west for Sparks Marina. Follow the greens to the east for East Head Anchorage, Itchener, and Chichester and Burden marinas. Or it's straight on northbound for Northney and Emsworth. Whatever your intentions, you must have got yourself into position before you reach the imposing frontage of Hailing Island Sailing Club. As a regular user of the harbour, I've learned to take the time to check the Sailing Club website to see what racing is scheduled. Only last weekend, we had to hove to in the main channel to allow around 200 Optimist dinghies and their young occupants to cross in front of us. Looking over to the east, you can see the greens curving round the northern edge of the Winner, a drying gravel bar that is very steep to and very close to the wrong side of those lateral marks. Whilst over on the west, the channel leaves off to Sparks Marina and to the Mengham Rythe Channel and Sailing Club. For us though, we're heading north and the fishery South Cardinal marks the start of the Emsworth Channel. This quiet stretch of water is our milk run home just under three nautical miles of tranquil shoreline.
The moorings on the western side end at the entrance to Mill Rive. This channel dries, but at the top of the tide, you can get up to the marina moorings at the Hailing Yacht Company. At low water, we often see the harbour's colony of seals hauled out on the drying areas. But today, with the tide in, we get to see the yacht Terror. She was built around 1890 to transfer the oysters from the larger boats that would be dredging the harbour. She'd pick up the day's catch, race back to Emsworth to offload, and the fresh oysters would be away to London. As we near the top of the channel, we find a fork in the road at the North East Hailing Pile. Straight on, between the moorings is Emsworth, but we're taking the Western Channel, over the Swear Deep and into Northney Marina. Whilst the aptly named Swear Deep is indeed reasonably deep, the final stretch is the exact opposite. Anywhere around low water springs and you'll need to keep one eye on the debt sounder, and yachts with drafts deeper than around one and a half metres are probably advised to wait for a bit more water when the tide's at its lowest. Finally then, we reach the Northney Beacon, and it's a 90 degree turn to port to line up on the marina entrance. Northney is dredged every few winters, but only just past the entrance, so there's still a cautious approach needed when there's not much water around. So that's it, we're home. I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.